Now, EU finance ministers have been meeting today in Paris to discuss further sanctions against Russia. Germany is under increasing pressure to drop its opposition to cutting off Russia's access to the SWIFT money transfer system. Now, Robin Wagner is a member of the German Parliament for the Green Party and sits on the Parliament's Committees on Foreign and European Affairs. Let's wait for him to yeah, appear. You, there he is. Well, welcome to DW. Um, why is Germany so opposed to cutting Russia off from the global financial system? I think it's not only talking about uh, the word SWIFT and, and um, the feelings that you have with talking about SWIFT. But uh, we definitely need to have strong sanctions against Russia as we are facing uh, an aggression against international peace order and against us as a whole. So we need to have a package of sanctions that really work and that um, really um, push hard against uh, Russia's capabilities to finance their war. And uh, we need to have a good calculation between what we do and what will be the retaliation that comes from Russia. And um, I think we, we need to take all of this into account. And it's not only talking about the word SWIFT, but to have a good package that directly addresses those responsible and directly addresses uh, everything that is necessary to cut off financing. You say that we need to have a set of sanctions that will allow us to push hard against Russia's ability to finance its wars. Wouldn't cutting it off from SWIFT achieve that? That could be one part of such a package, but we also have other measures that we're taking right now that also um, really go, a strong, uh, go strong steps uh, to that goal without having the uh, negative side effects of cutting off um, from SWIFT. So what are the negative side effects that, that you fear? What is the Russian retaliation that you fear? Well, we would definitely cut off everything that could happen between Russia and the rest of the world. And um, that would be a strong problem also for civil society within Russia. We would cut them off directly from, uh, from, from total financial systems. Um, and we have other measures that have strong effects as well. Okay, and forgive me for interrupting, but I, I would, what I would like you to do is to on, give on our viewers, is to give people watching uh, DW now, this is your opportunity to tell them, this is why it is bad to cut Russia off from SWIFT. If, if we cut Russia off from SWIFT, these will be the negative consequences. The stage is yours. No, it's not only talking about SWIFT. It's, it's no, so no, focused please, on SWIFT please, please, moment, please, please, please address that point. We need a please, strong all right, European, we can address we the others. That's fine. Everything. But this is the big one on the table. So, SWIFT is the one that Germany opposes. Explain to the audience why it would be a bad thing to cut Russia off from its ability to finance its wars by, by cutting it off from SWIFT. Explain to us what the negative consequences would be. No, we would not cut off Russia with this one measure from financing their wars. It's a package of measures that we need at the moment, and we need a strong, unified European position on all these measures. And it's it's... Not a good idea to focus solely on, on SWIFT. We have other measures in this package that will work on the way to cutting off Russia from financing their war. And we totally focus in the debate on SWIFT, which is not a very good idea. It's not only this one aspect. This one aspect is what makes us all feel good that we have done everything we could. But there are other measures in the package that are quite strong. For example, today, there were uh, even sanctions against uh, Putin and Lavrov, which was not something that has, has been done in, in uh, ways of sanctionings before. You've talked, about a, strong, you've talked about a strong European response. This is the third set of sanctions that Europe has imposed on Russia. There was a set after it brought down uh, 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 MH111. There was a set that you agreed before this uh, war happened. And this is the third set. Where is the evidence that any of this has had the slightest impression on Russia? I think we're not talking about the last sets of sanctions. We're talking about this set of sanctions, and we, uh, we have a strong set of sanctions at the moment. Germany has attracted even more okay. sanctions if necessary, but at the moment we have a strong set of sanctions on the table. One of the criticisms that, that Germany has faced is that it puts its own commercial interests with Russia ahead of wider considerations, right? And, and, and it has taken your, the, the German Chancellor so long to even 
use the words Nord Stream 2. I'm going to presume that you, that you are going to say that that criticism of Germany is unfair. As a Green Party in Germany, we have a, a long history of strong, strongly opposing Nord Stream 2 uh, in this package. We have had that uh, quite a lot of times before. Uh, and it's, uh, Nord Stream 2 is a geopolitically wrong project, and it's very good that it's off the table. And the foreign minister, uh, Annalena Baerbock, made it very clear that Germany is willing to pay its price for a strong set of, of sanctions and for um, really uh, acting against this aggression against international law and, and peace in, in Europe. Thank you so much for joining us. Robin Wagner, member of the German Parliament for the Greens. Thank you. Well, the latest sanctions against Russia include, in terms of the financial sector, the US is putting restrictions against all major Russian banks. Meanwhile, the EU is also cutting the ability of the Russian state to access the bloc's capital markets. There are asset freezes and travel bans for a number of individuals, including politicians and oligarchs with close ties to Putin. There are further sanctions against the Russian energy sector. After putting the Nord Stream 2 pipeline on hold, the EU is threatening to curb exports and imports for gas giant Gazprom. Other sanctions target the technology sector as well. The EU will stop supplying high-tech components and software to Russia, and the US says it will severely restrict Russia's access to semiconductors, computers and telecoms equipment. Still on the table, though, is disconnecting Russia from the international payment system SWIFT, but that would come with severe problems for Western countries too, and so far hasn't been agreed upon. Well, we can now speak to Veronica Grimm from the German Council of Economic Experts. Thanks a lot for joining us. Let's talk a bit more about the latest EU sanctions. What impact are they actually going to have on Russia? Um, so, meanwhile, uh, the EU summit agreed on a package that had been prepared for weeks. So, access of major Russian banks to Euro European capital markets will be blocked. Um, assets of certain Russians in Europe will be frozen. Um, goods for the energy industry may no longer be delivered to Russia and some other sanctions. So, the fact that these sanctions were passed um, without much controversy can be seen as a sign of particularly good preparation or also inadequate preparation because after all in a view of the massive invasion maybe tougher sanctions would also have been appropriate and um, one has not decided to cut out uh, Russia from uh, the SWIFT payment system. So this would be a quite tougher um, sanction that has not been uh, chosen up to now. Yeah, they, they have decided that they're not going to exclude Russia from this, sim to this system that would you know, make it very difficult for Russia to trade with other countries. Why have they stopped short of that at this stage? Um, so it has been said um, that um, there have to be uh, sanctions um, that would remain in case um, more severe sanctions would be appropriate. Um, however, um, this situation might have been um, occurred already uh, today. So the SWIFT uh, sanctions uh, would have the practical effect that cross-border payments would no longer be possible and would also restrict um, payments within Russia. So this would be a quite uh, severe sanction, actually, and it had been applied uh, before to other countries uh, in the past, for example, Iran, North Korea, or Afghanistan. Um, for example, in Iran, after uh, the 2012 exclusion, um, half of the oil exports and a third of international trade of Iran had collapsed. So it, it had a very big impact on Iran, but it is being saved up. Like you said, Germany is one of the countries that says that it wants to keep this sort of uh, in the armory for use later on. But what sort of a situation would it take for this actually to happen? Um, this um, is very hard uh, to answer for me. So uh, I think um, the um, invasion has been massive up, up to now, and um, it seems that the situation has also not been expected uh, in the way it happened um, before. So I would think that uh, an exclusion of SWIFT uh, would be appropriate um, as a sanction, but it has not been uh, decided, maybe because it had not been prepared 
um, sufficiently up to now. Right. But there are EU member states that are pushing for it. Poland, for example, uh, Latvia, countries that feel a lot more under threat from Russia. I want to talk about, actually, the impact of what's happening in Ukraine for ordinary Europeans. It's a continent that's already struggling with inflation and an energy crunch. Are those things that are going to get worse because of what's happening in Ukraine? Um, yeah, the gas prices are currently at a very high level and the situation is not expected to ease in the short term, uh, especially if um, the gas supply um, from uh, Russia is decreasing now due to the um, crisis. It is not clear whether this would happen and at what time uh, this this could happen. Um, however, wholesale prices will gradually pass on to consumers. So gas prices are very high. The path on to consumers um, is slow because many of them have uh, longer term contracts. But further price increases um, are to be expected for further processed products. For example, um, the price increases will spread to fertilizer and then also to food. So the inflation is likely to remain high this year. And we should see at least a four before the decimal point for 2022. And this makes, of course, second round effects the wage price barrel uh, more likely and puts a lot of pressure at the ECB in a situation that is very complicated in Europe at the moment. OK, Veronica Grimm from the German Council of Economic Experts. Thank you so much for bringing us your insights. Thank you. And I'm now joined in the studio by Cassandra Sunt from DW Business. Cassandra, we've just been hearing about the sanctions that are coming Russia's way and could be coming Russia's way. Has Moscow been preparing for a moment like this? Yes, they have. Part of the problem here is that this was first dangled as an option, this idea that Russia could be kicked out of the SWIFT banking system back in 2014 when Russia annexed uh, Crimea. So... At the time, Russia responded in a typically bombastic fashion, saying that kicking it out of the SWIFT system would be the equivalent of a declaration of war. So at the time, Western allies put it on the back burner. That was in 2014, over seven years ago. Russia has had time to build up what many are calling a fortress economy. Uh, they've de-dollarized massively. Uh, 20 years ago, 80% of their liabilities were in dollars. Now it's less than 50%. They've built up gold reserves and $643 billion in currency reserved reserves, and they have one of the lowest debt-to-GDP ratios in the entire world. So these are all results uh, of a careful plan that Putin has been, President Putin has been putting in place since the annex of Crimea in 2014. But nevertheless, this would have a big impact on how Russia could um, deal with the rest of the world if it were to be kicked out of SWIFT. So I'm, what will Russia do if it is? Yeah, uh, we only have one example, really, of the U.S. successfully getting a country kicked out of SWIFT. That would be Iran. So there's not a lot of historical data to go off of, and we are reading the tea leaves, but there are some fears being floated around that if Russia is kicked out, it would undermine the SWIFT system as a whole and encourage the development of alternatives. Russia does have its own system, SPFS, but currently it's really only used by Russian banks. China launched its own system in 2015, uh, but that's really still under development. Um, it's called the Cross-Border International Payment System, and it's only used by about 80 foreign banks. But in principle, there's no reason it can't be used as a substitute for SWIFT. And believe it or not, there are still some pre-SWIFT tools that Russia could use, Russian financial institutions could use, like the telephone and telex. And nowadays, you could use email as a secure uh, business, a uh, bank-to-bank uh, secure messaging system. Um, these are all tools at Russia's disposal. So so while removing Russia from the SWIFT system would be cutting it off from a key highway of global finance, there are other back roads that it could use that even if they are a little slower and bumpier. And of course, the West would have less control over whatever alternative Russia sought out. OK, Sandra, thanks for bringing us up to date.